What's going on everybody? This is Jeff. Today we're going to make a video to talk about the bucket list for Hawaii. So a lot of people have bucket lists these days. You know, they're like, oh, I'm going to add that to my bucket list. Whether they literally have a bucket list or they just put little things in the, in the uh, bucket and then they, you know, pull them out and say, this is where I'll go next. Or they just have it in their, their mind like I do. So I've made a list here. I actually took time to write it out. It's called the Hawaii bucket list. So let's just kick it off with uh, swimming with dolphins. I'm going to go ahead and um, give you two recommendations for swimming with dolphins. Although it has come under scrutiny, DLNR does is trying to crack down on it because uh, animal rights activists are, are saying that uh, the boats are abusing their opportunity. So, you know, and I've even talked to some of the, the people, the, the boatsmen on the, uh, the boat and they'll say, yeah, you know, they, they, they do question how aggressive people get with the boats and the dolphin pod. But then again, the people also say, well, you know, it's not that bad. You know, so it just depends on your outlook. But all in all, I'd say that uh, it, it, it is a, a bucket list item. I mean, it, I thought the dolphins were all happy. I mean, I thought they were, every time I've gone, I found the dolphins to be completely, totally way faster than me and everyone in the water. If they really wanted to get out of town, they'd take off. I mean, they, they sometimes they come up to you, you know. So I felt like... Um, you know, I felt like the dolphins actually come up to you and they kind of make themselves available. Whereas they have the opportunity also to not be as available. But the pod chooses to kind of play, be playful, but within their, I mean, if they don't want to hang out with you, they'll just dive down. But it's still pretty cool because, you know, you can swim with dolphins. So I would put that on the bucket list. So you got Kauai, which is on the Nepali coast. They do that. And in Kona. I don't know if anywhere else they do it. I don't think they do it here on Maui. And I don't know if they do it on, um... Oahu, but I think they do, and I know they also do shark dive, so that's the next thing, swim with sharks, and I mean, we've seen Ocean Ramsey, and um, what's his, what's his name, uh, Clark Little, they swim with sharks over there on the uh, North Shore, out of Haleiwa, so that's pretty cool, you know, those two things, and then the third thing would be uh, manta ray dive. That's in Kona only. Uh, worldwide, they do manta ray dives, but I don't think there's anywhere else in the United States that does swimming with mantas like they do in Kona, Hawaii. I know they do it in like the Maldives. I think they do it in Cancun, ba Bali, you know, and that's about it. But uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I was intimidated at first having not really been too much of a water bug myself, but when I got in there, I felt like I was. I could get used to that kind of life, you know, diving with marine mammals. It was pretty cool. I must say, just having dolphins coming up to you, like 15, 20 of them, just swimming right past you, it really is like a once in a lifetime opportunity. And then the same thing with the manta ray. I haven't done the, I haven't done the sharks yet. Uh, just sharks, you know, I'm cool with it. But you know, like I said, Clark Little and Ocean Ramsey, they swim with big old tigers, tank the tiger and all that. Uh, even great whites that are not very common here, but they do come and occasionally Ocean Ramsey finds them. Uh, next thing that's on your bucket list is going to be a uh, whale watching encounter. You know, whale watching, whale encounter. Can't get too close, can't get within, I think it's uh, 300 yards, is 300 yards or 100 yards? I'm not sure exactly the DLNR law. But uh, that's pretty cool to see, you know, whales when they're breaching and when they're with their calf, because they come down here with their calves from Alaska and you know they give birth and then you know they basically get away from the orcas and then they give birth and then they go back up there once the calf is you know growing and getting bigger and not such a uh you know an easy target for orcas uh another thing going back to exploring sea caves on the nepali coast just taking a boat tour along the the nepali coast is just fantastic it's it's definitely up there with uh the top things to do so exploring the nepali coast by boat uh, this goes to my next thing, explore Volcano National Park. You can also do a lava tour by boat to the lava from, but that's from Kalapana, which is outside of Volcano National Park, 
But the actual national park on the Big Island, Volcano National Park, has Howling Mau Mau, which is a active lava lake. And they also have um, old craters and the Jagger Museum and the Volcano House. And just it's a, the Thurston Lava Tube is just a really beautiful place to explore. I highly recommend a day over there. It's, it, you, you might not need a full day, but yeah, you might. Um, it's kind of it's kind of on par with Yosemite and Yellowstone. I would compare it to those two right there Being that I have never been to like Glacier National Park. I couldn't say uh, but yeah um, Ah, Here's another one road to Hana the road to Hana that's on Maui now they got um, Wainapanapa which is the black sand beach that's quite a beautiful place. They got like a lava tube over there you know, the road to Hana just in general is beautiful, okay? So just do the road to Hana. Some people do need drama means. For me, I was okay going in. It is windy road, but on the way out, I felt as though I was getting a headache because it is so windy. It is a windy road. It's not just the... People aren't just complaining. It, it really does uh, wind. <laughs> and it's a one-way road. So, you know, whereas it might take you, what, uh, less than an hour to go you know, uh, 45 miles, the road to Hana takes a long time to do 45 miles, like two and a half hours. So it's one of those kind of deals. It's windy, it's slow, it's one lane, and then it's two, it's like enough for two cars. So it's kind of interesting, but it's worth it. There's waterfalls. And if you go to Hana, go past the town of Hana. So the road to Hana, meaning the road to Hana, Hana the town. And that's where the red sand beach is. Shh, don't tell anybody, but you know, the red sand beach, it's over there. That's, it's kind of hard to get to. You got to ask for permission from the landowner. A lot of people don't go, but people do go. I, I do know that if you do go, you you got to make sure you get permission. Uh, but it's amazing. They got Homoa beach over there. And they got just other beaches. They got beautiful waterfalls, the seven sacred pools. Um, or the pools of Ohio, uh, they got along that road, even back, you got the lava tube, you got the bamboo forest. So the road to Hana is just tons of waterfalls. It's like a very wet place. Mm -hmm. Then, um, I'm going to say, uh, Lani Kai of all the beaches in Hawaii. If there's one that really stands out, Ooh, there's a couple actually, you know, there's a couple, I would say just explore you got to go to like one of those amazing white sand beaches, whether it be Makalavena, Lani Kai. I mean, Kailua and Waimanalo, those are beautiful, but they're, you know, they're just, they don't, they don't have a Lani, Lani Kai has or Makalavena or um, another beauty that's pretty cool. You know, one of those white sand beaches like, oh, Pola Hale, I think it's called um, Barking Sands Beach on Kauai. That one's, that one's pretty cool. Seems like the whole west side of Kauai is awesome. You know what, you got Waimea Canyon, you got Nepali Coast, and you got Palahele, which is where Barking Sands is, which is next to the uh, missile silo, United States Air Defense, Air Missile Defense. So they don't develop this, this uh, beautiful beach, but man, that beach, it's a beautiful place, but some of the strongest shore breaks, I don't even know if people can swim there. It's that, it's like, it's the only thing between basically Hawaiian, uh, uh, you know, Japan. <laughs> so it's, you know, takes a brunt force of ocean energy, that beach there. Mm. That's, speaking of that, North Shore surf uh, set season, you know, you wanna be there during like uh, November, December, January, even um, into February. You got also on Maui, you got North Shore Maui, Piahi, which is Jaws. Jaws, when Jaws is pumping, I mean, Jaws is getting worldwide attention. Jaws is like the one over in Tahiti. It's like North Shore, I guess, Waimea Bay, you know. But Jaws, when Jaws is going, I mean, everyone from all over the place is showing up. From Laird Hamilton to, you know, Shane Dorian to Kelly Slater, John John Florence, I mean, Mick Fanning. You know, they, these people, they come they come over here for Jaws. That's a big wave surfer, surfer, like, you know, paradise. The other place in the world that, that gets going like that is in, uh, oh, I think it's in Portugal. I know there's one other big place, and there's one off the coast called of California called Mavericks. 
but yeah. Here in Hawaii, you got Jaws, which is Piahi. And then, you know, you got uh, back to Kauai, hike the Kalalau Trail. That's, uh, you actually begin the Kalalau Trail. I, the only place I know is at the end of uh, the road, you know, the, the road to Tunnels, Tunnels Beach Joe Pass, Hanalei. You park there and then you hike that trail along the Nepali coast and you got to backpack it in and you end up like coming across some really dramatic coastline. <laughs> when I was there it was windy, very windy on those trails. It's kind of iffy, but whatever. Uh, oh, another thing on the bucket list, Hanalei sunset, a Kauai sunset from like Hanalei. Well, obviously Paula Hele, you know, Bark and Sands area would be pretty cool too, but uh, Maui's get Maui gets some really great sunsets. You know, just take in a sunset in general. But if you can do Hanalei sunset, that's pretty great. Uh, Palu Valley. Now, there's it's, they call it the Valley of the Kings. It's seven seven sacred valleys. You got Waimanu Valley. You got Waipio Valley. Palu Valley. This is on the Big Island. Uh, I don't know the other names of the the valleys. I know they're a lot smaller, but those are the three main valleys. I personally found Polulu to be probably a little bit more my taste than Waipio. Waipio's kind of rugged. They don't really want people down there. There's people who live down there. The people who live down there don't really want people coming down there. It's cool. It's beautiful down in Waipio. It's great. They also have a, a beautiful waterfall, but then again, they don't want you going over there. Whereas Polulu, you know, you can kind of explore a little bit more. And just the fact that you're a little bit more welcome and it's still a very beautiful Jurassic Park kind of setting, Polu Valley, which is, you know, you go past, you, you, you got to go up the Big Island, you got to go all the way to Javi, and then you go around past Javi, and then you come to the end of the road, and that is where Polu is. Worth it. I like, I like to go there. It's like, a, it's like a very special place to just chill out. Now, here's another thing that's really popular, Mauna Kea and Haleakala, sunsets and stargazing. If you're into if you're into stars, if you have a, an affinity for the heavens, the astro astronaut, you know, if you're like a wannabe astrologer or astronomy uh, grad, some world class viewing and photographers. If you love photo photographing stars, I mean, you'll get more stars in, in uh, Mauna Kea than you've ever seen. <laughs> and Mauna Kea gets going. The stars on a clear night and then you have uh, okay so now we have food so do you guys like to eat food <laughs> so for food you got okay so everyone needs to try a poke bowl if you're going gonna eat anything try a poke bowl pokey poke just it depends on how you call it but poke okay so that's the uh, go to one of those places like on the Big Island they got a Mackey's you know, they got uh, various different places where you can go to get a poke, a poke bowl. And, you know, you get rice, you get the, the, like the sashimi, you know, kind of sushi kind of meat. You get tuna, whatever, whatever. The, just ask them what, the, what their, their favorite is. What, say, what's your local, what's the, the custom bowl, the, the local favorite? That's the one you want to get, depending on what place you go to. And then if you're actually, you know, with the kids and you're hot and you, you just want to kind of have fun and relax, everyone likes to get a shave ice. You know, it's hot, especially if you're on a beach. You just need a shave ice. Really full of sugar. That's what I mean. That's basically what it is. It's like one big giant sugar. <laughs> sugar ice. It's more like what they should call it. But yeah. And then, you know, um, it, as far as food, it, 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 it's, it's kind of cool to get a cup of coffee, Kona cup of coffee when you're in Kona. Um, experiencing that a little bit. I think it's, uh, I know that a lot of people, no, I tell you, tell you straight, I think it's overrated. I think Kona Coffee is a little bit overrated. I, I don't think that, I think this is what ended up happening to Kona Coffee, and I'll just give you a real quick synopsis, and I might even do a video on it. But basically, land is so expensive in Kona that the price of Kona Coffee has gone so high because of the the price to to do business is it, it, they can't keep up with like Colombia or Cuba or anything like that. So 
it might be a, a very rich place to grow coffee, but it's so expensive and the, the operating cost and maybe even the quality just doesn't ever amount. So I think it's lost its uh, mojo. So that's my thing on Kona Coffee. But still, Kona Coffee is world renowned and it is famous. Um, outside of that, you know, that's, that's basically the, the must do uh, bucket list for Hawaii from my perspective. I mean, it, if, if anything, if you guys, you know, at the end of this video, go back and watch it again and take notes, okay? Because <laughs> I think I move pretty fast, but if you can at least get some of the pronunciations down and look up some of the places and things that I recommended, when you come to Hawaii, you'll have a really cool bucket list, I promise you. And if you enjoy these videos, uh, hit subscribe. Also, I was going to ask you guys, I'm thinking about doing a worldwide travel list. So I, I, uh, I love to travel the world and I'm actually putting together my own bucket list, my must do travels list. And I'd like to know if you guys think it would be cool if I made a video talking about my worldwide travel bucket list. Considering the fact that I've got a lot of experience with this, I thought I could add value. Up to you guys. Thanks for watching.